I'm Leanna Kay, and this is your second Video Geek download. I'm joined this week by my guest, Binky, who is my cat, who just jumped up here before we started rolling because my computer's going like crazy. And Binky's like, WTF, let's party, because that's the way Binky rolls. Now, my cats are exposed to a lot of violence through video games. Now, this would imply, according to what all those boogeymen out there would say, that they would become violent cats, okay? I'm being a total jerk here, but that's what we're talking about. The, the Senate hearings on gun violence in America and the fact that Call of Duty came up in the, the testimony um, while all this was going on. And there's a bit of a disturbing disconnect, well, a lot of a disconnect between US lawmakers who, let's face it, when it comes to the media, so goes America, so goes the world, okay? So we've got a disconnect with lawmakers and games. Chuck Grasley was the guy that was like, oh, Call of Duty, shoot him in Norway, oh, causal link. No, that's not the way science works, dude. And if you actually read the good stuff, then you'd see that. But there's a more problematic figure in US government right now, Joe Biden. If, if you wanna say his name like Matt Damon and Team America World Police to make this easier on you, go ahead, here you go. Joe Biden. Okay, so Joe Biden believes that we shouldn't be afraid of the facts when it comes to whether violent media, especially violent video games, cause violence in the real world. But, Joe, you've already got a fact wrong. He's quoted, uh, hi Peanut. This is Peanut. This is another one of my cats. Say hi Peanut. Hi Peanut. Okay, so. Peanut, you're making me look bad. You're not supposed to be violent. Don't be violent, Peanut. Because you watch a lot of violence. You're going to make me look bad. Okay, cuddles. There we go. Okay, so. Peanut's mad at Joe Biden because Biden said we shouldn't be afraid of the facts. Let the research be done, he said. He and the president believe very strongly in research. But he said that, where's the quote? There's no hard data as to whether or not these excessively violent video games, in fact, cause people to engage in behavior that is antisocial, including using guns for violence. You, sir, are wrong. There's plenty, plenty of hard data to say they don't. The problem is there's a lot of data that says a lot of things. And when you get a lot of data, it's very easy to lead to a lot of confusion, which is why I've got Mortal Kombat 2 up here on the screen. I'm gonna take you through a not so brief history of the debate with violent content and real life violence to give you guys some historical context because I want you to be able to make the choice for yourselves. Anybody in the media who says that they're the last word on something is somebody you shouldn't listen to because we just don't have the time to speak to everyone independently and have a dialogue. And anyway, I'm rambling. So, Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal Kombat was at one point one of the most violent games in the world. It was actually one of the things that led to the ESRB, the rating system that you see on, on the little boxes of video games and then on the back, see mature, 17 plus, blood and violence. So because there's blood and violence in this game, they can't sell it to you if you're a kid. That's the way things are supposed to work, right? Well, apparently that's not enough. We're still having this whole debate because Mortal Kombat back in the day was in arcades. And okay, if a kid is hanging out in an arcade without his parents for prolonged periods of time, that's a bit weird. Because arcades, I always remember arcades smelling like, you know, cigarette smoke, pretzels, spilled Coke, and peanuts. That's what I remember and then the mold on the carpet. That's what I remember about arcades. When my mother used to hold me up to play Bucka Bucka, that's what I called Pac-Man back in the day. Pac-Man, the game that started it all. We still love Pac-Man. In Pac-Man we trust. As you guys can see, I like a lot of violent games. Um, I don't consider myself a violent person. If uh, violent games have taught me anything, it's that I should not own a gun. Um, but back to Mortal Kombat. Um, Mortal Kombat's one of these games that everybody's sort of freaked out about it when it came out, but unless you can throw a fireball or turn invisible, I don't think you're going to be doing the things that Mortal Kombat did. 
However, this did freak a lot of people out and they insisted that it led to delinquency. And I'm just gonna let you guys see the beginning of the arcade game so you can see what, you know, the gold standard in epic violence was back in the day. And now the combat continues. Here it comes, epic violence. Now we look at it and go, oh, come on. It's like they're spitting jam. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what they're doing. But back then this was a big deal because one of the things that had just become popular is 16-bit graphics. So things looked a lot better. Well, the content of games really hadn't changed terribly. The way it looked had just become that much closer to real life. And so we got things like this. So this led to the creation of the ESRB, among other games. But the thing about this game is that it was actually inspired by movies. It was inspired by Jean-Claude Van Damme films and then kung fu action movies. And it was four or five guys working on this game. There was no big conspiracy to make our kids violent. There was no grand plan with any of this. It was four or five guys. Um, who just wanted to make a game based on the stuff they already liked. Ditto for a game called Doom, which originally started off as an Aliens spin-off. You know the movie Alien? <laughs> Chester Burr, uh, right? That's what it started off as. The thing about these violent video games that led to the creation of the rating system is that they were based on stuff that already existed. So the idea that they suddenly made us into a bunch of murderous zombies. How does a zombie hold a gun? The zombie, a zombie doesn't even have the higher brain function to hold a gun. I mean, come on. Do Left 4 Dead zombies hold guns? I'm blanking. No. Anyway, no, Left 4 Dead zombies do not hold guns. They just have tongues that go and grab you by the neck. And you're like, Ugh. and then you spend this long dying because none of your teammates come to save you because they're all noobs and that's why I stopped playing Left 4 Dead. Anyway, moving on. Back in the day, 1950s, this was the height of violence in the media that was turning our kids into what they called at the time delinquents. And things like this led to the creation of the, the Comics Code Authority, which took comics from looking like that to looking like this. Sorry, I love Captain Marvel, but this is boring. No kid wants to read this. Oh, it's a comic about three people standing on clouds. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. No, no, and that's why they do it. More on that later. But this motif, this stabbing in the eye, has endured. And it showed up and I've got two sort of, we'll call homages or continuations of the trope in modern media. One is Dead Space 2. And anybody who's played this game right now is going, Aah! No, because they know what's coming. I'm not going to show that. But if you look, it's, it's pretty similar. Not much has changed in terms of what scares us. And that's what these images are intended to do. They're intended to freak us out. They're intended to scare us. And if they were intended to, you know, make us less, you know, if they were intended to make us immune to violence, then they wouldn't scare us anymore. Guys, if things work the way these politicians are saying they work, then everybody's gonna be out of a job. And the people who are in these jobs know that somebody getting stabbed in the eye is never not scary. And you know who knows this? Kevin freaking Bacon knows this. It all comes back to Kevin Bacon. Yes, it does. This is one degree of Kevin Bacon here because his new show just debuted, The Following. Guess where that thing's going in the show? Right in her eye. And this was on. Naked chick with stuff written all over her and all at nine o'clock at night. And so I got on Twitter and was like, bah! and all my freaky gamer friends, and we're all supposed to be so desensitized. We're like, bah! and we were totally freaked out by this. Nine o'clock at night. But video games are turning people into psycho killers. This calls for action because I'm all about action. And don't take that the wrong way, you sick little monkeys. So, this is my suggestion. I think to solve this issue once and for all, we create a new bureau. The Bureau of Cool Stuff, okay? And the entire purpose of the Bureau of Cool Stuff is to explain cool stuff 
to politicians because they don't get it right now. Guys, Department of Cool Stuff, Bureau of Cool Stuff, I'll run it and you can blame me for everything because I'm Canadian. I'll take it and say sorry. And this is my concern with what's going on in this guns of the media thing is that this is the rock and roll. This is the comic books. This is the, you know, long hair of our generation. It's something that wasn't around when guys like Joe Biden were kids. So it's strange to them. It's foreign. They go, Ugh, and automatically think it's the downfall of society, not thinking that this is what their parents did to them. It's this intergenerational thing that, as I've showed you, has been going back. I can't stand to look at this. I'll go back to this because it's cooler. Yeah, more my thing. Um, actually, that's ugly. Let's put up something else. What should we Google? Here we go. Here we go. Um, no. It's the internet. Kitty. Cats. Now it's the internet. Here we go. Lots and lots of pictures of kitty cats. So now we can all calm down and not be violent anymore. Look at that. Look, that cat looks like it wants to cut a bitch. That's a violent, look at how violent these cats are. These cats have murder in their eyes. Look at that. That cat is plotting your doom. Oh, that's pretty cute though. Like seriously, this, this is the downfall of society right here. So now that we have kitty cats and we're all calm. I'm Leanna K. That's this week's video geek download. Listen to me on top 20 countdown. Follow me on Twitter at Red Leanna K.